Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Simon and we are the Wells of Wall Street. Today we're going to have a quick look at Ethereum, um, a brief technical analysis but more importantly uh, this London fork that's coming hopefully, fingers crossed, in the next few weeks and what we think that might do to the price drive uh, in, in these coming months. So without further ado, let's go straight into this. So I'm sure most of you know uh, Ethereum by now, so ETH on the exchanges. Um, so I won't go into too much detail about that or maybe I'll do a video on that separately actually to be fair but our latest video on, on Ethereum will be around the London um, fork so um, it's not because it's based in London or anything like that they just call these um, developments in Ethereum um, by city names so the previous one uh, being uh, Berlin so um, let's just uh, go into the uh, chart uh, and see what we're we're looking like in terms of the Ethereum market at the moment. So currently, um, sort of sat on the just over the the two thousand mark. Um, so currently, uh, I think we're looking at around the two thousand one hundred odd uh, at the point of recording this video. Um, as the market in general across the board has been quite um, quite lower than it was before, uh, that we do see some stabilization occurring. So yes, of course, we want to be back near that $4,000 mark at some point. But what I find encouraging at the moment is, um, of course, everyone's FIB charts are slightly different. But in terms of the one that I've been following the pattern of, um, we have sort of delved around that sort of 2,200 mark and we're sort of picking and choosing whether we want to come back down a bit more uh, towards the 1800 again or or start making some more tests on this kind of support line at the 12,200 mark ish um, and then potentially move forwards to test these higher ones again but what I think is really important for this particular asset this crypto asset uh, there's a couple of things here RSI chart from the last two weeks is, is looking quite strong in that in that mid format range um, around that 40 mark so for me again not um, financial advice at all this is just my personal uh, thoughts here um, you know good buying opportunities at that sort of lower end yes of course down here would have been great but you just couldn't sort of anticipate where this was going at that time so for me it was a bit too risky but I'm happy and comfortable at these sort of levels um, to to make some moves and potentially you know wait for those higher ends as the fork develops and gets created uh, and good news starts following them and people get more bullish in the market it could be a good opportunity to to get some good gains here so the ethereum london fork is actually quite interesting so those that um don't know so it, most most of the old previous cryptos like uh bitcoin and ethereum you see a lot of news out there at the moment in regards to uh the, the fees the transaction fees and things like this um, and this is based because of their like proof of work status. So this is basically allowing computer hardware uh, to do the work for them. Obviously very energy consuming, um, which we've done in a couple of previous videos, which I'll add to the end of this one. So the, the, the way it works basically, essentially um, trying to figure out all the problems, mathematical equations, things like that, to ensure that a transaction is valid. So that's how the proof of work is. And then miners obviously get rewarded of that. Um, and that's why you see a lot of the previous miners making a lot of money um, you know, and profitability at the moment in some of these crypto assets in terms of proof of work. The alternative to this is proof of staking, which is a lot of the newer platforms are using uh, in terms of their tokenomics and things like this. This allows basically anyone to use the assets that they essentially own um, to do this work for them instead and would be rewarded in terms of utilizing their assets for staking um, as a kind of like a, a loyalty program if you like so you can put them on things like pools and 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 we have things called like validators uh, i do one for example with harmony one with uh, the guys on youtube on cheeky crypto uh, there's multiple hundreds of thousands of, of validators for each kind of token that you can possibly think of um but yeah, for me, you know, I, I then stake my assets and I get rewarded with more assets or in some cases, uh, you know, interest on things. So you see across various platforms like Binance and things, you'll see all these staking opportunities and you get rewards for them. Well, that that is what it is. You're basically giving your, your assets to the community or to the chain itself to help keep improving it 
and that's the proof of staking it's extremely energy efficient uh pretty much most of them net zero actually um and it's just a, a great way to keep keep the flow of the system and keep improving the blocked uh blockchain itself so that's uh you know just recapping on that um but the idea behind this new fork is basically using something called eip1559 which is basically um you know the improvement uh, it's eip by the way stands for ethereum improvement proposals i found that out this morning always wondered what that was um so yeah it's trying to improve the transaction fees or basically the gas fees so you might have seen these some of these terminologies in 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 the past so basically eventually uh, mining will become relatively unprofitable using that proof of work element um, and that's what they're trying to design is moving away from the ethereum system of 1.0 to the 2.0 um there were some delays but we're seeing a lot of news around sort of august the 4th time so we're not far off that um there may be some more delays we don't know yet but uh, i can imagine the price of ethereum starting to jump up a bit more as we move forward but um yeah i i guess like one of the key things like at the moment the gas fees are so high of of like um ethereum at the moment so if you put it in like to perspective like if you've got like 30 dollars of of this and you're using ethereum as the transaction portal i think like the gas fees were something like 17 or 20 dollars so you're losing a substantial amount of money from this like transaction um approach so the idea behind this is to create like a kind of like a deflation uh system where um you know each each kind of like blockchain uh or, or sorry each block when it's being being mined is essentially um you know having like uh less fees towards that and and rewarding the miners in regards to um you know the burning of the fees and things like this so it's it's all quite uh interesting on that point um it's it's allowing miners to have like tips if that makes sense um, and allows people to skip the queue by accumulating, giving more of their assets away. So there's a bit of a confusion here because uh, obviously part of decentralization is to give everyone equal, equal equality, sorry, in, in that area. But it kind of like benefits the large miners who perhaps have like um, the low energy costs uh, within their vicinity. And when each block gets to like that 50% capacity, uh, the fees do increase and things like this so and, and vice versa so the fees will decrease if it's it's below so it's it's a really interesting uh fork that they're they're basing this on um and of course like the base fee for each block on on the platform or the chain um they'll be they'll be basically burning these fees so it will it will also sort of be um essentially reducing uh the supply and this is where i come into the point about the the pricing here and um, yes always you have some hype videos and interaction with youtubers and things like this for for ethereum um and, and other crypto assets as well but for me one of the really key points about this um this chart at the moment is the stability of it but with the fork news i can anticipate probably again not financial advice just my opinion that this price is going to start uh racking up in the in the coming weeks so i think it's uh it's an interesting point of ethereum's life cycle there is the eip uh 338 i think um three uh three two three eight coming so that's due next year we'll go into a bit more detail on that um but i think they're just trying to get this particular element done first um just to kind of align with a lot of the topics at the moment with about green finance and, and making it more um what would be the word like uh more economical really for the, for the in terms of the tokenomics and the way ethereum works uh the way the miners are working and the stakers are working it's just trying to bring it down a notch in terms of fees and things and make it more of a balanced uh solution because there's a lot of competition out there um uh, fighting for the same sort of space same sort of technologies we've got things like uh you know i've done videos on like xtc recently xinfin um those kind of platforms you've got cardano cardano is probably uh, a similar equivalent to ethereum of what they're trying to do um yeah and they're they're essentially ahead in terms of costs and things like that and speeds and efficiency 
So it's all good news for Ethereum. Ethereum have got massive experience. They've been around for a number of years, maybe eight years or even more now. Uh, great leaders and founders and developers. Um, it's not going anywhere. Um, you see these higher prices compared to other ones because they have been around longer. Of course, you could see things like Cardano potentially being this kind of level in, in maybe five, 10 years time, who knows? But yeah, Ethereum's been there, uh, it's trusted. There's a lot of platforms, a lot of tokenomics used on this, uh, you know, the ERC tokens and things like this. Um, so it'd be great development, um, great something great to have an interest in over the next few weeks, see how this develops. I'll do an update near the time of this supposed uh, August the 4th uh, date. Um, we'll see where we are. It'd be really interesting to compare the price, um, where we are on price from now to then as well. So yeah, hopefully you found this uh, informative. You can go on um, you know, various platforms to find out uh, a bit more uh, if you want about the fork um, and particularly from the Ethereum side, what, what it means in more detail. And uh, yeah, of course, everyone's starting to get bullish. The old moon memes will come out again, I'm sure, in the, in the coming weeks. So let's keep an eye on it. Uh, I find it uh, really interesting. Um, I did have Ethereum before and I sold it a while back when it hit those high marks back in sort of February time. Um, and I, again, not financial advice, but I'm starting to look a bit more bullishly towards this again as to maybe there's going to be an opportunity with these announcements coming out and actually being reflective in, in their real world time of being used and being launched. So. Let's see where it goes. So I hope you found this interesting. Please do like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments below if there's any other tokens or crypto assets that you want us to look at uh, or any announcements that you've seen that you want us to take a look at. Um, just, just let us know and we'll, we'll come back to you and we'll definitely do videos on them as and when we can. And other than that, guys, um, I hope that we see you and Ethereum on the moon very soon. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.